The suspicion is that it's cars like this Audi RS4 which represent the real performance state of the art. I'm Jonathan Crouch, editor of Car and Driving. Just after the Audi RS4 finished production, I took the opportunity to define this car's legacy to a performance car world that never really caught up with it. Exactly how good was, how good is this car? For the answer, I'm here just about to board the SS Stena Hollandica en route to Continental Tyres Contidrum test circuit near Hanover in northern Germany for the performance car test to end all tests. Truly a performance car masterclass. At the end of it all, there'll be nowhere for this car or the engineers behind it to hide. And if it really is as good as Audi say it is, then we'll be talking about the world's finest real world performance car. As I boarded the ferry, it struck me that talking about it is easy, but defining it was not a challenge I wanted to undertake on my own. So I brought along Terry Fiddler and Andy Enright, key members of our road testing team, who agreed to meet me in Holland. Morning. Hello, Jonathan. Come on, come on. Come on, there, mate. How are you? really was bitterly cold, certainly no time for a chat, so we headed off through passport control and onto the highway. Now it's been a long trip guys, but looking around at the range of facilities here, I think it's going to be worth it. What are, what are your expectations? I don't know. My first expectation is that they could have given us an armchair, <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of sitting on tyres here, but uh, I won't hold that against them. It's easy to build a car that's good at one thing only, but a car that can do everything hasn't been built yet. Audi think they've got a pretty good approximation with this car. And we've got what is effectively a heptathlon of events for it to tackle tomorrow, the day after, and the rest of the week. So it's got a lot to live up to. Yeah, well, I guess that's why we're here, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's been a long day. We really are tired. So let's get some sleep and let's get on with it tomorrow. Day two, and it was time to take the Audi to the track to put it through its paces. The problem was the track was covered in frost and the track officials determined that it was too dangerous to take the car out. This meant sitting around until the sun finally thawed it out and then we were off. Assess any performance car nowadays and you'll be asked about drifting. This involves setting the car into oversteer by balancing the steering and the throttle. Ideally you don't want excessive oversteer in everyday driving. So the Audi is set up to not let that happen. You know, Terry, I think this RS4 is a real landmark car for Audi. I mean, there's loads of grit and safety built in, but when you want it to, it can really loosen its belt, you know, and let you have a bit of fun. Yeah, well, let's put it to the test. Go let's on, have a go. Let me hand you this. The electronics on this car are set up specifically to keep the car straight and on the tarmac. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and throw the vehicle around now with the electronics on and see if the vehicle will kick out and will do silly things. Here we go. So let's throw it in. No matter how hard I threw the car around, it never really broke free. The electronics kicked in and feathered the power or applied a little bit of braking to one of the wheels. I knew that if I really wanted to put the car out of shape, I had to turn all the electronics off and do some things that you would never normally do. So let's hit the brakes, throw it in, loads of power, back on the power. The power is enormous and it really is balanced. Okay, here we go. Let's have a little bit of handbrake. Round the back comes. Look at that. Here we go. Back on the power. Woohoo! A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Incredibly easy though to put it back in control. Look at that, almost completely sideways, yet we're still able to bring the car back into the line where we're driving. We're not getting excessive oversteer at all. In fact, we're struggling to get oversteer, although we are getting balance. And by doing kind of silly things, we're able to get the car to go into a nicely balanced slide very easily. The car obviously is wanting to come back straight. And that's exactly what we want. Oversteer might not be a problem on this circuit, but what about in the real world, on typically wet, twisty roads? 141 days of every European year, that's three in every five, feature rain. 
So a high performance car that can't be driven powerfully and controllably in the wet isn't worth bothering with. What we were looking for in this test was a car that was not only capable of being driven safely at high speeds in the wet, but actually could be by the average driver. And that's a very different thing. Now I've driven a lot of cars around this track. I've driven Evos, I've driven M3s, I've driven Porsches. But I can't recall a car that I could drive so quickly, so easily, in the first couple of laps as this one. It really feels like it responds to the driver's every input. It gives me a feeling of confidence and a feeling of safety. That's a balance that's very hard to achieve. Now there's a nimbleness to this Audi that's genuinely surprising, thanks in part to the multi-link front and rear suspension and also to the DRC, dynamic ride control, that helps keep the car flat through the corners. You really feel it on a wet handling track like this one. Now we started off by asking whether this Audi was a performance car that a real world average owner could get the best from at high speeds in really wet conditions. I think the answer is yes. It's proved that it can handle conditions but also respond in such a way that you don't have to be Michael Schumacher to get the best from it. Brutal acceleration can be a dangerous thing of course but it can make the difference between passing that swaying arctic and causing an accident. That's provided, of course, first that the acceleration arrives in a smooth, manageable fashion, and second, that the brakes are strong enough to counteract it. So what kind of acceleration can this 414 brake horsepower V8 Audi provide? And are the brakes up to the task? This 0 to 100 miles an hour to 0 test, monitored by a GPS data system, was designed to tell us. Try one more time. This car requires you to get into, make a gear change just before 100 miles an hour, which is a little bit of a pain. I managed to fit in two successful attempts and then headed off the track to look at the results. The results that we got from the 0 to 100 to 0 were interesting and not at all what I expected. We did two runs, one where it was dry and then it started raining and dampened the surface up a little bit. And the surprising thing was that the Audi was actually quicker to 100 miles an hour when the surface was a little bit damper. It allowed a little bit more wheel spin and it didn't bog when it went off the line. But when it came to braking, obviously it was a whole lot better in the dry. There's not as much in it as you'd think. It got from 0 to 100 to 0 in 15.69 seconds, according to our satellite data logger, when the surface was dry. When it was wet, 16.89. So only 1.2 seconds in it. Just goes to show that this car is enormously capable when the surface is wet or when it's dry. If you were to make a composite time of the wet acceleration and the dry braking, you'd get 14.71 seconds. And that's an impressive performance by any measure. As the day drew to a close, we were surprised just how quickly the sun set in winter, and so before long we found ourselves heading into the warmth. So, Terry, yesterday you said there were a whole bunch of performance cars that you take over that RS4. Do you still feel the same way? Uh, no, I have to say my expectations are a little different now. But there's still a lot of testing to go. Today it was all about grip, traction off the line, that kind of thing, and a four-wheel drive car is always going to excel at that sort of thing. Yeah, right. Right. There's, there's a lot to be said for effectiveness, and. The RS4 was going around on the drift circle, on the low friction cobbles, and the car was going around at a rare old rate, and it just would not unstick. Doesn't that make it a bit boring, though? You know, the sort of driving I do, driving home in the wet, in the cold, I want a car that has got a big margin of safety, but will still paint a big smile on your face. You were out on the, on the wet handling circuit today, and you look like you you're having a lot of fun. Huge, huge yeah. amount of fun. <laughs> oh, and I was thinking as I was driving around, it's the closest you can get to a tarmac rally stage. And there's nothing boring, is there, about four-wheel drive rally cars, is there? Well, I guess Audi are supposed to know a thing or two about rallying. They're like reminding us of yeah, it, don't they? They're always <laughs> doing it. But with the RS4, out on that wet handling circuit, if it couldn't cut it, there's not really anywhere to hide. And in my opinion, the car 
more than held its own today. It, yeah, was, it, it, was, it, it was an it impressive did. performance. Yeah, but rain forecast for tomorrow. I think early starts call for. Yeah, early left. start. No. Early start. <laughs> Set your alarm. Kick him out of bed. <laughs> Kick him out of bed. Yeah. Oh, I hope it's worth it. <laughs> well, they weren't joking about the early start. We hit the road at first light, some of us more awake than others. It was a 20 minute drive to the track, or at least it would have been had someone not suggested a shortcut. We would be putting the car through twists and turns on the dry handling track, as well as testing its speed in the high speed bowl. By far the most prominent feature of the Contidrome is the amazing bank circuit. There are two 500 meter straights connected by 900 meters of banking canted over at an incredible 58 degrees. It's the steepest banking of any circuit on earth. It's one of the few places in Europe where you can safely drive a car at 150 or 160 miles an hour. We're here to test the high speed stability of the Audi RS4. And in the meantime, I'm gonna watch a few of the Conti drivers at work. Their buyers may never take them to 170 miles an hour and beyond, but these cars have to be capable of running at these kinds of speeds for hour after hour. This Audi can do just that. So can a lot of cars, you might say, but there are different ways of managing ridiculous speeds of the kind that you get at the top of banking so steep that you can't stand upright on it. We've driven many other high-performance cars around this banking, all of them capable of maximums at or close to 170 miles an hour. But at that speed, each in varying degrees, offered a pretty white knuckle ride. The Audi was different. Almost uniquely, it was a car that felt comfortable at its maximum, even when bumping along at the top of the banking, inches from oblivion at 170 miles an hour. It's a car you can trust at times when trust is most needed. So we've established the wet handling credentials of the Audi RS4, but what about something more extreme? What about aquaplaning stability? The reality is that one day you're going to hit a large patch of water at high speed, the results of which will probably be pretty frightening. The faster the speed, the more the aquaplaning will affect the vehicle. So on this facility we're not only going to test the vehicle's ability to resist aquaplaning, but also its ability to recover when put horribly out of shape. Car and driving, entering great aquaplaning circle. Okay. Now most vehicles can handle the aquaplaning pull on this test facility at 40 miles an hour plus. I'm very confident that this vehicle will easily handle more than that. So I'm gonna start at 50 mile an hour. Here we go. Virtually nothing happened to the vehicle. Minor amount of understeer going on. The vehicle veered a little to the right. So I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna hit it at a really fast speed. And let's see how the Audi handles it. There we go, we're 80 mile an hour. We're only just hanging on to the circle at this speed. So hitting an aquaplaning pull at 80 mile an hour is pretty serious. Tires squealing, hitting the pull. Wow, really is a very freaky test. And what we're gonna do now is something silly. We're so confident at this car, we're actually gonna blip it and do what you shouldn't do in an aquaplaning situation. I'm gonna throw it, get the car to go a little bit out of control, see what it feels like. Wow, lots of stability came in. What I'm gonna do is switch the stability off See what happens then. <laughs> it really is a very capable car, this car. It dealt with what I would call massive aquaplaning, a massive event. In normal situations, it would be incredibly frightening to have to deal with that. But this car dealt with it very, very well. I have done this facility before in other vehicles and I have to say we got nowhere near those sort of speeds and when we did begin to reach 70, 75 in other vehicles we were put so horribly out of shape 
it was it, it was terrifying I really have to say so we went to 85 mile an hour and I think that really is the sensible limit at which you can push any vehicle around here and we were able to um, maintain composure after the event without using anywhere near the runoff space that's been left here so I'm gonna pull in now and I'm gonna relax now there's nothing more pointless than owning a high-powered car and never being able to use it in extremis. Yet that's exactly what the majority of high-performance car owners actually do. Driving hard, they hardly ever get their cars out of third gear. I'm here at the Contidrome dry handling track. Now, not everyone has a racetrack to play on, but these days, everyone can take to the track, even if it's only for a day. Everyone else was going round the track so quite why we spent so much time talking when we had a whole circuit to play with is anyone's we'll guess. I'm getting right up there. <laughs> Finally, we stopped talking long enough for Jonathan to take to the track to put the Audi through its paces. This was our last test. Terry and I went to watch. He comes through this twisty section. He's going to lift here. He's going to lift. Commitment, <laughs> <Come here, laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Listen to that. God, listen to the rubble. It really is something else, that engine. It does sound good. It does yeah. sound good. I'll give you that. Audi have put a lot of effort into smoothing out the cornering roll on this car, and it's really paid dividends. That's more like it. Now, the steering's a little bit lighter than I would like, but it still enables you to place the car very precisely wherever you want to in a corner. And you get to the point where you think, you're bound to lose grip, and it just doesn't. It goes on and on and on. And this is with all the traction control systems turned off. It's just unbelievable. And you're right, there's a definite smell of brakes already, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. He's, he, what's he done? Six or seven laps at full bore. That's not bad for a, quite a big estate car. Yeah, it is a very big car, so I suppose the brakes really are working far more than a, a normal track car would be. Well, if the brakes aren't completely sizzled, I'm going to throw Jonathan out of it in a minute and have a go for myself. Sizzled brakes or not, there was no way I was going to let Andy or Terry throw me out of this car. They'd just have to sit on the sidelines and keep watching. As we started to lose the light, Andy and I went for a coffee, courtesy of Jonathan's credit card, while he stayed and played for as long as he could. Soon, even the track marshals left, and feeling a little hungry, I headed inside to find some food and my credit card. Well, the weather just held out. Only and, just. And we were able to do all the dry weather handling we wanted to do. Yeah. Now, I really had my doubts about this car and whether that it would handle dry weather conditions uh, like a performance track car that we're, we're testing. Well, it he, he would know. He's been on the banking all afternoon. What do you think? Oh, it's, it's, I think it's proof that Audi's new design direction is working. This, it's the last of the old A4s, as it were. And it's, it was, in many ways, it was the first Audi of the modern cars that really established yeah. Audi's reputation landmark as, car, as, as a serious yeah, performance yeah. car manufacturer. And one of the things that really impressed me on this test has been that it's got more grip than, a, than one of those rally replica four-wheel drives that, you, that really? you've got. It's just amazing. Yeah, before you got hold of it, I was out doing the 0 to 100 to noughts, and when you brake there, you really feel the effects of not only the anti-lock brake system, yeah. but the brake force distribution, the brake assist. It really punches the power up to the brakes. It's... So when you really went hard on the brakes, did you feel it start to snake and wind, or did you just keep very composed? Well, it, it wasn't going anywhere. It really wasn't. I had it at high speed on the bowl, and it felt super composed, as you'd expect. Uh, it was just a very, very quiet car at speed. It was very, very impressive. I'll tell you what, it's not so quiet when you're sitting behind you going around the dry handling track, John. <laughs> 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 that flutter of the V8 coming out of the back of the it, sounds, it actually really sounds better nice. with, with the estate body shell, doesn't it? You get that. You're going, and you're going, it's like you're going down a runway at the helm of a Lancaster bomber or something, <laughs> and you hear this great howl behind you. So did you get any warning lights come up? Nothing at all. A sure no. sign of a car that's struggling is when some of those warning lights... There has come. to be something that you don't like about it, though. Well, the main thing I don't like about it is that you can't buy it anymore. I, I mean, this car's really changed my feelings about high-performance Audis. Yeah, I, I'm really struggling for reasons why I shouldn't buy it. I'm struggling yeah. to uh, not go out on the track on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm it is, it is. Let's have a go, eh? I'll put the bonnet down. <laughs> <laughs>